Hi, I'm Donna Baker, co-founder of Beyond Kin Project and owner of GenoHistory.com. I am going to take a minute here to guide you through the process of installing a GEDCOM file that has a sample Beyond Kin Project on it. It's something that uh, my business um, shop has made available to the Beyond Kin Project um, and will help to sort of give you a sense of what a Beyond Kin Project structure looks like. Um, so to get to it, you're going to go to my uh, business website, genohistory.com, and then um, go to the shop right here. Uh, it's a few rows down. Right now, this tends to change order. So just look for the big BK right here, the Beyond Ken Project Starter GEDCOM. It's, uh, it's free, of course. So just click on that. And then um, you can add it to your cart right down here. And then your cart will show that an item is in it. Go there. Um, and then choose to go to checkout. All right, so in here, um, the, the sales tax laws and all require that certain elements be filled out on this for me to let anything go out of the store. So uh, fill in whatever you want to fill in there that uh, make sure that anything that's essential that has an asterisk by it is filled out. And um, then you need to agree to the website's term and terms and conditions. Um, if you want to receive uh, newsletters and other special offers from GeneralHistory.com, you can leave this checked. If you don't want to hear from my company, then turn that off. Then place your order. It's going to bring up a screen that offers you a link for you to click on to download the GEDCOM, which is uh, just a tiny text-based file that it's going to uh, download in a zip format. All right, so you um, click down here on the download. And what you're going to see here is, is your file. If your computer works like mine, yours may have a slightly different way of downloading things. But um, then I am going to show it in the folder where the download is. Okay. So it looks something like this. And um, I'm going to double click on that to open it. I want to get to the file that is the true GEDCOM file inside the zip file. And that's what this is right here. All right, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to copy it. I do a control C to copy. You might use your right click and copy. And uh, then I'm going to move back out to the downloads, and I'm going to paste it as a file all its own. So here I've got this GED file that I can um, upload. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to upload it to Ancestry.com. Um, you may use another product. So long as your product can import GEDCOMs, it should be able to pull this in. Um, so I'm going to go to Ancestry. Okay, once you're in Ancestry.com or wherever you're going, in Ancestry, the way it works is to go to Trees, um, scroll down to Create and Manage Trees, All right? And then you're going to scroll to the bottom of the screen, and you're going to choose to upload a GEDCOM file. It's going to create a brand new tree out of that GEDCOM file. Later, you might be able to use other tools to pull that into another um, existing tree if you want to do that. But right now, it creates its own freestanding tree. It wants to know where the GEDCOM file is, so I'm going to choose File. I'm going to go to my um, Downloads and find the file. There it is. I click on it. I click Open. All right, and it wants to know what you want to name it. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to name it Beyond Ken Project. And then um, I, I am not going to have it public right now because it's not going to be really functioning for me. If you plan to go on and turn this into a tree, a usable tree, um, then you might want to go ahead and make it public, or you can make it public later. 
Um, and then it's asking you to acknowledge that you understand that what you're uploading is not ancestry material so that you're taking responsibility for what you're uploading. By the way, what you're uploading is completely blank. It's just got, uh, well, it's placeholder things. It doesn't even have real people in it. So um, it should be uh, nothing for you to worry about in terms of the safety of that file. Click on I accept and click upload. All right, so it uh, has put it in. Okay, so we want to now open it. It's here in the third place. I, I have tons of Beyond Kin Project things in here. Um, so yours will probably be a little easier to find than this, but just click on it. And it only has a few um, profiles in it just enough to do one slaveholder structure. And then you can fill in the blanks about what um, this person's name is and so forth. And then you can begin to copy this and do it in other places, uh, depending on how many people you're working on. But I'm going to click here on the slaveholder. And um, I'm going to click in this name field so that we can look at the profile. And then it's trying to help me, and I'm going to get that out of the way. But uh, you begin to just fill in the blanks, all right? So it's giving you what it wants in these. Um, I, I'm assuming you already know how to use uh, whatever your tool is. Uh, if you're an Ancestry.com user, you would go to Quick Edit to change uh, the slaveholder's first name and the slaveholder's last name to put that in. And you can put any other things you know about them, birth date, birth place, and so forth. And, and you save that once you've changed it. Um, now, the slaveholder may have many, many things that you're going to put in here about the white family, but the thing that connects the slaveholder to the enslaved persons in his uh, household or in his property um, is this item, a spouse that we've created called the Beyond Kin Project. So click on that. Uh, this person or virtual person, the Beyond Kin Project, exists only as a placeholder, as a link between your enslaved population and your um, slaveholder. We didn't want the enslaved population to be connected directly to the slaveholder because it might confusingly look like we're talking about biological kinship or a, a marriage or legal kinship, which uh, may or may not have happened, but in this case we're assuming it has not happened, that what we're looking at is the... the um, slaveholding population separate from the slaveholder, but connected through this one link, the Beyond Kin Project. Um, the one thing that you want to change on this one is um, you're going to want to change the last name. All right, so the last name here needs to be something that reflects the slaveholding institution. For example, if my grandfather is Jacob Mayberry um, and he's the slaveholder, the last name might be put in parentheses here as Jacob Mayberry's farm or Jack, Jacob Mayberry's plantation or whatever it was. The, the slaveholding institution might be a school. It might be a, an ironworks foundry or something. So uh, make the last name descriptive of the slaveholding institution. Um, wherever possible, use unknowns for gender when we're talking about these virtual people. And um, then you're going to see that we have already married this person to a second spouse, the enslaved population. So this is where you hook in to see where all the enslaved people are going to be, <clears throat> where you're going to work that group of people's records. All right, so you, you're also going to change the last name here to exactly what you changed it to for the Beyond Kin Project. That last name, that surname, which is the slaveholding institution, is what ties all of these records together until you have real last names. All right, and then uh, these records down here are source records. They are set up as children of the enslaved population. They would be a thing like a will or a census record. So the source is where you're going to reflect every person who's described in a particular source. So I'm going to go into one of them here. So you would um, give the first name at, that would be a description of the source. It might be... Jacob Mayberry's will of 1852. All right, and then, and then again, that same last name that reflects the name of the slaveholding institution. All right, and you begin to put in 
the enslaved population as children on the source record. All right, so, so, and you would also, in this case, um, I'm going to click on this so you can see, and you'll make as many of these as are, are appropriate, as many sources first, and then as many enslaved person records as you need. Um, they may be repeated multiple times. The same person may show up under multiple different sources. That's good if it's happening because it means that you have a person that you can begin to fill in the detail of their lives by how they show up in different sources that you find. You find them in a census. You find them in a will. And each, uh, each piece may give you something you need about that person. One gives you the age. One gives you the fact that they're mulatto. One gives you the face that, excuse me, that one gives you the information of a first name, maybe, or that they're a parent. So you grab what you can from each source, and you, be, you will eventually begin to, to uh, merge together all the information about a single person and get to know them better. But as you are in here, you, you're going to change the first name to what you know. Now, if you know a real name, that's what goes here. But if what you're given is just a description, or if it's just a first name with descriptive text, like um, Sophia, a mother of two, or whatever this, the description is, of that person until I have the full name, that's what goes here. And then we also put the um, slaveholding institution as the last name, just as we have on the others. Okay, so that's basically your structure. Um, since sometimes that was the hard thing for people to visualize as we described this in the beyondkenproject.org site, this at least gives you the structure and you can begin to fill in the blanks. And as you start to move around in this structure, you'll begin to figure out what you need to do for the future because this actually does get easy as not, not simple, but it, it gets much easier to do. Um, as you do this a few times. And to get back to where we were, you go back the way you came. I, I look at the source parent. I click on the enslaved population. And then I have the um, Beyond Kin Project spouse. And then I have the slaveholder right here. So when I click on that, I go back to the slaveholder. So that's just the entire structure in one piece for you to begin to work with. Hopefully that will help you. Um, and again, I encourage you not to let the complexity of it dis uh, discourage you because you will, um, before you know it, have this down and you'll be able to do it easily. So make sure you give it a try before you get frustrated. And there are many, many people to help you on our Facebook forum. So good luck with this and um, let's get started.